Previously, we looked at the basics of kinematics of circular motion as well as how to think about centripetal force, who is pulling what, who is accelerating where. In this video, we're going to look at some basic examples to get you ready for the past year questions of circular motion. There's five questions in total, but here's the first one. That's sort of simple and nice. Express an angular speed. Ooh, what is angular speed? When you see angular speed, remember this is our omega of 200 revolutions per minute. Oh, so we need to convert RPM. This is called also known as RPM, often used in engines and machines. RPM convert to radian per second. Wow, how do you convert this? Okay, let's stay calm first. Let's here's a hack I always use for conversions. You can use it for any conversion, not just circular motion. So first step I'm going to do is write down whatever units I have here. So this is revolutions per minute. So one minute. That's 200. Now we have to create a bunch of what I call chains to multiply such a way that the units are radians per second. So let's get rid of the revolution first. So I'm going to put, draw a fraction. Revolution I put here. Radians I put here. Why I put like that? Leh? Because then revolution and revolution cancel out, leaving me with radians, which, I want, which is the unit that I want. Unit. So one revolution is how many radians? Think of it this way, one circle you go and come back, what's, what's the angle? 360, yes, but we want in radian, so instead of 360, we say 2 pi, radian. So here, in one revolution, there is 2 pi, this is the ratio, okay? One revolution, 2 pi, okay, it's good. Next, what else do we need to get rid of? Minutes, ah, right, so we need to draw another fraction for another ratio. We want to convert to seconds. So I am going to put minute on top so that minute and minute cancel out, leaving me when convert minute to what? Convert minute to second. So I put here second. So then you look at the ratio of minute to second. One minute got how many seconds? One minute, 60 seconds. Okay, so at the end of the day, after all this cancel, 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 what you have is 200 times 2 pi over 60. And what's, what's the unit that is left behind? Radians and second. Ah, so we are in the unit of now radian per second. Very good. Press calculator. Uh, in physics, you will get a... We want a decimal, lah, so just write 20.9 radian per second or just per second. Okay, so this is one way to call a chain conversion method. Another way you can think of it is, oh... Omega, method number two. Oh, omega equals to 2 pi over t. Um, but we cannot use that equation here because 200 revolutions per minute. One revolution is 2 pi. So it is 200 times 2. Oh, so it's 400 pi per minute. Then you convert to second. Also can, uh, that method also can. Divide by 60. So many methods work. Choose one that you can understand and can do. Okay, another one. So now you have a particle moving around in a circle. 10 seconds at a constant speed. Oh, no picture, how I miss? No picture, you draw your own picture. So draw a circle. Okay, particle. Yeah, where should we put the particle? Let's put a particle here. 10 seconds, a time taken. So this is uh, in that certain time interval. Usually we say delta t or you just say I t can already. Constant speed. Now, if they didn't say what speed, uh, means is this angular speed tangent? If they didn't say, you can assume this is just V, which is the tangential speed. So that means, uh, let me try to draw it like that. Okay, this is your V, which is 15 meter per second. They never say, ma. Ah, then later they want you to find angular speed. So angular speed, you see the angle, 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 this is omega. How to find omega? So there's two equations. Actually, there's one equation for omega, never mind. Omega equals to 2 pi over t, right? So how long does it take? Hmm. Let's plug in the equation. So in a full cycle, how long does it take? 10 seconds given to us. How does it know? Leh? They say move round in a circle in 10 seconds. Okay, so this one is divided by 10. This will give us 0.628. Radian per second. I don't want to write the radian, I'm lazy. Okay, so we found the first thing, angular speed. What else do we need to find? 
we need to find now the radius of the circle. Okay, so for this second part, you think and see what equation got R. Miss many equation got R. Oh, yo. Okay, so we see what we have first. We have W, omega, we have V, we have T. I think we can use V equals to R omega to find us the radius. As long as it's got R can already. Lah. Right? So velocity at any instant, I should say tangential velocity, which is the speed, 15. Radius is what? Ah? Oh, we're trying to find. Okay, never mind. So radius and the angular speed, we just found 0 0.628. This will give us the R value of 23.9 meters. Wow, very big. Okay, that tells me that based on all this information, radius is 23.9 or 24. Okay, next. No, oh, it's not got more words coming out already. A particle of mass 150g move in a horizontal circle radius 50 cm. Time for art. Zoop. So now they give us radius, which is 50 cm from the center to the side. And the particle is have a certain mass, m. Oh, got m already. Uh. Constant speed, this is v. So imagine the particle is here. Okay. At a certain speed, 4 meters per second. And it has a certain mass to it. Find the force towards the center that must act on the particle. Somehow, somehow, something has to pull the particle, right? If not, it will go in a straight line. Somebody pull it so that it's now curving around the center. So, force, you remember, our centripetal force equation, if I don't write, have a simplified version of it. Centripetal force, which is also a net force, is mv square over r. This is the first equation. Like, or you can say mr omega square also can. So let's plug in equation. What's the force that must act on this particle? Mass, oh, convert to kg, 0 0.150. Velocity, 4. Radius is ah 50 cm, must convert to meter. Okay, this is in meter, this is in kg. Okay, I think that's all right. And we scroll Okay, done. We cannot use this one. Ah. We don't have enough information. So here, we will get 4.8 4 meter. Meter? Ah. Okay, very big. 4.8 newton. Sorry, not meter. Force, force. This is a force. So, was some force, maybe it's a tension or normal contact force. So contact force, maybe. They didn't tell us, so we don't know. But some force is definitely there to pull this particle always towards the center. Always uh, towards the center. This is how you can find the force. Okay, by the way, this equation comes from F equals to MA. We sub in A equals to V squared over R. Right? Next. <clears throat> almost there, almost there. Wow, this one have many words. Okay, one end of a light inextensible string of length is attached to a particle of mass. Oh, now you tie the string to the particle. Then your other end of the string is attached to a fixed point on a smooth horizontal table. So you imagine you have a, a circle, a round table, and you have a particle here. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not in the, the, the edge of the circle, but never mind. And you tie a string from the center of the table to the to the particle like that. Okay. So got string means got a force already. It is tension. Ah, okay, okay. So we have mass. We have the length of the string, which is also the radius. The string is 20 cm long. Ma, so that's radius of circle. So this table is smooth, horizontal table, which means no friction. Okay. And it moves at a, 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 a constant angular speed of 3 radian per second. You see the per second, per second, this one is omega. Okay. So we have, the, we have info for mass, we have info for radius, we have omega. Find the tension. What equation to use? Ah? How to start? Ah? Uh, maybe we try to write out first. There's only one that has mr omega. That is a centripetal net force. So F equals to MA. But 
in centripetal circular motion, Fc, is the resultant force here. So other than tension, uh, any anyone else pulling the string? I'm uh, pulling the particle, sorry. Don't have, right? So only got one force, right? So I'm going to write a note here. Tension provide the centripetal force that allows this particle to move in a circle. Round and round and round. So here, only got one force. Oh. Okay, lor, one force only. Tension. If you've got many force, then you must include more lah, towards a circle. So I'm going to define towards the circle as positive. Okay, so towards circle. Only got one force, ah, positive. Lah. Okay, ah, positive. If there's another force pointing away, oh, then you must minus. Oh. But don't have, right? Okay, so this one, T equals to M times A. So mass, uh, acceleration is going to be V squared over R. We said we want to use the other one, R omega squared. Must memorize the uh, equation for acceleration. So T equals to M R omega squared. Then we plug in. Everything here, 0 0.250. Radius is 20 cm or 0 0.2 in meter. This is in kg. Last one, omega. Given to us, 3 radian per second. Okay, so already SI unit, so okay. Uh, square. Okay, this will give us 0 0.45 newton. Okay. So that's how you can find tension. The tricky part is identifying who provides centripetal force. Here only got one force. In the future, you'll see more than one force, maybe. Okay, last one for today. Here. A particle P, 10 gram, very light, rests on a rough horizontal disc. Ooh, how to imagine? Ah? Uh, if I want to draw a 3D diagram, oh, it kind of looks like this. Imagine a CD certain thickness like you know where you put your foot on the table and then the table can turn round and round so there's a particle resting here and then the center and this this all can rotate like that so the particle will also rotate because if it's sitting there now this one note is a rough horizontal this so the first thing i see this question i'll be asking you who provides some centripetal force who what force provides Centripetal force. Got string ah, no tie string also leh. Rough this ah, rough. So got friction. So there will be some kind of frictional force that will allow this particle to move in a circle. Wow, like that also can. Okay. If I want to level up a bit, or I can say, oh ne, here got a uh, this, here got particle, and then got a string. You tie some more leh. Ah, then there's two force already. There will be string tension. There will also be a frictional force. Two force contribute to centripetal force. But never mind, that's a level up question. So anyway, let's see what other information we have. Uh, it's distance 15 cm from the center. So I guess this distance here is 15 cm. Now this is rotating at a constant angular speed. So everything is not changing. This is our omega. Omega radians per second. Calculate the force due to friction acting along the plate. So we want to find the force due to friction. What is the friction force? How many Newton? Um, it might be a bit hard to see what's happening here. So I'm going to do a top view. You see the eye that I draw here? If I look from the top, lah, what do I see? So this is how it will look like from the top. There will be a circle. Uh, the turntable or a disc. Lah. Then there'll be a particle here. Lah. Then the center. Okay, so this particle is going to travel in a circle. Beep, 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 around the table. Yeah, my circle so weird one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> here to here is a distance of 15 cm. Okay. We want to find force. We start out with Newton's second law. Fc equals to ma. Who provides centripetal force? We just identify friction. So... I'm going to call this friction, small f. Mass, acceleration, got two, two formula. Which one to use? Ah? That's A equals to V squared over R and A equals to R omega squared. I think for our information here, we got omega, right? So probably want to use this one. They didn't give us velocity. 
So this one we don't know. So yes, we'll use that. So m v squared over r. Okay, plug in equation. Mass. 10, 0 0.010, 1, 2, 3, ah, correct, kg. Ah. Eh, mv square, but why I write mv square over r? Ah, mr omega square. We don't have information, cannot use. 0 0.15 cm converted to meter. And lastly, omega, 1.2 radian per second. Okay, this is a good start. So we should get a very small force. Zero, okay, never mind. 2.16 times 10 to the negative 3 Newton. A very tiny force, just about keeping the object rotating. Remember, uh, this object is rotating like that, with a certain velocity. But friction is making sure that this object stays in a circular path as it goes round and round. Okay, so that's the beginner's basic part of thinking about one force that contributes or provide centripetal force. So go and try out some of the, the practice questions before we go and do some past year. So just make sure your basics are there. Lah. You know how to use the equation. You can think of how things move in a circle. Okay, but that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.